People diagnosed with essential tremor and Parkinson's disease are often sentenced to a life of debilitating tremors. Shaking so severe they can no longer work or perform routine tasks like holding a spoon or a fork to feed themselves. Fortunately, there's a procedure called deep brain stimulation that can give these patients a new lease on life. My hand would, it was constantly like this. It was, both hands both. were. And the first doctor that I talked to, you know, like I say, he, there was a lot of older people in that waiting room, you know. And so when he told me I had Parkinson's and he watched the other patients and there you go, wow, I don't want to end up like this. Because yeah. I was di diagnosed 15 years ago and up until about five or six years ago, I was controlled pretty well with medication. And then that began to not work so well. And in about 2001, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's at 38 years old, which is pretty young. And um, progressively gotten worse over the years. Within the field of neurosurgery and neurology, I think deep brain stimulator is one of the most exciting and really phenomenal treatments that we have. Most of what I do in neurosurgery is preventative, or it's treating really catastrophic things that have happened to people. But deep brain stimulation, it fixes people, it makes them better, it takes them from a, a state of disability and returns them into a state of function. For people like Tom, Mike, Lori and Shane, the continued loss of control of their bodies gave each of them a bleak outlook. As an electrician we get, uh, uh, we get to work on some hot electrical panels and things and it's kind of shaky to, to worry about uh, going into an electrical panel with your hand shaken. I got to the point where the medication there was too much high and low and it was not working the way that I needed it to to even be able to function for a while. I wasn't able to even write with my right hand without taking it and pushing it along. And what were your options at that time? Well, it was nothing, like you said, you know, just deal with it, just deal with it. But he says, you've got about five years. At the end of five years, you, you will have to do something because it'll have, it'll have gotten to the point where you know, you're going to have to make some choices. Well, it was taking away my ability to really be able to plan to do much of anything from day to day because it was so erratic as to whether or not the medication would work from day to day. To place a DBS system in the brain actually is two surgeries. The first surgery places the wires into the brain. That's the critical surgery. The second surgery comes back a week later and puts wires in connection down to a pacemaker-like device that sits under the chest. The goal of the surgery is to place these small wires into a very tiny location of the brain called the subthalamic nucleus. It's about the size of a small almond. And so we use many different pieces of equipment and different techniques to make sure we're getting into the right spot. Then we stimulate the brain uh, with electricity and we see if it has an effect on their tremor or their stiffness. Okay, so this is our this is our planning software where we merge the different images that we've collected about this patient's brain and we pick the target we're going to go to inside the brain tissue. It's a very sophisticated software that lets us do this planning. Okay, are you comfortable? Yes, I Does your neck feel good? Uh -huh. You ready? ready? Okay, let's do it. How are you doing this morning? I'm great. How about you? So this is called our phantom base. It simulates where we're going inside the brain. So I set the coordinates in the brain on the phantom, and I set the coordinates on the arc, and we make sure that they line up together as a double check. During the deep brain stimulation wire placement, there's multiple steps in the process. The first step is uh, we bring you into the operating room. We get you situated very comfortably on the bed. The second step is we give you some sedation so you're asleep. We make two small incisions on your head behind the hairline. And uh, then we drill some holes so we can get down to the surface of your brain. Then you wake up and we begin the surgery when you're awake. Now, it's remarkable, but the brain has no sensory fibers, so you can't feel anything when we're doing things in your brain. Okay, should we start waking up now? Okay, thank you, Bob. Nice brain. Sandy, are you awake? The brain has billions of neurons, and neurons communicate with each other, and they communicate through what are called action potentials, which is a small discharge or depolarization of the neuron. With a microelectrode, we're actually able to hear and pick up those discharges. One of the things that microelectrode recording is very good for is helping us define where we are in the patient's brain. 
it verifies for us that we're passing through the targeted region and it lets us very precisely put that wire within submillimeter accuracy in the brain. Okay, all our coordinates are double checked and we're ready to go in. So we're going to advance this little microelectrode now. Pressure 117. Okay, we're all hooked up to the microelectrode. Let's see if we got some signal. So it looks like there's some kinesthetic cells in there that are responding to activation of our arm. So this is the DBS wire we're going to put inside the brain. It's got four little contacts and we can stimulate each of those little metal contacts through our stimulator. And here they are working on your brain and you're not feeling anything. Not feeling a thing. Wide awake. Was it weird? It was weird. It was, uh, was kind of exciting in a way, strange, uh, but uh, it was good. I have, I had no pain memories. When we're stimulating, we're of course testing the patient and we have them move their hand and look for their tremor and we move their arm to look at the stiffness and um, see how fast they can open and close their hands, which is a sign of the slowness. Stimulating at three and four volts now. Feeling anything here? Oh. Much more, better amplitude. How far does that go? My brain. Well, it goes about five or six centimeters. It goes a ways down in there. Excellent. It looks good. Okay. So we've taken an intraoperative CAT scan with a wire in the brain while we're in the operating room still. And we've taken those pictures and put it onto our planning station and we can verify that the wire is exactly where we wanted it to be. The deep brain stimulation procedure is truly revolutionary, especially when you see the dramatic results. This is Shane Nielsen and he's uh, a gentleman with Parkinson's disease. He was diagnosed nine years ago. And in April of this year, of 2010, we implanted deep brain stimulators uh, for treatment of his Parkinson's disease. And to start with, Shane's device, like I said, is off, and now I'm just going to turn it back on. We've been very fortunate. Uh, Dr. Urshauer and I uh, started doing this procedure 14, 16 years ago now, and then we brought in Jamie Mark as a nurse practitioner, and she's been with us for 10 years, and now the addition of Dr. Carlson uh, as a surgeon as well. Um, we're very fortunate, and I think we have done as many cases as um, you know, a lot of the big centers on the West Coast, and, and we're having a great success, and, and the patients you know, will tell you. As a Parkinson's patient, you feel like your whole life's kind of being taken away from you in some ways. So to have that feeling of you're under the right care was so important. And this surgery did so many wonderful things. It really gave me my life back. Do you feel like you have a new lease on life? A new, very, very much. Uh, if anybody would that has the tremors of any kind, Parkinson's essential, uh, I would go for this procedure any day of the week. It's actually brain surgery, but it's it's worth it. People say, you come up to me and they say, gosh, Mike, you know, you're doing really good. And I go, what are you talking about? And I go, oh yeah, I've got Parkinson's, I forgot about it. <laughs> you know, really, I mean, I, I don't have the tremors. Okay, so let's turn your stimulator on. Okay, good beep. Ooh, I get a little rush there for <laughs> just a second. <laughs> there went your tremor. My advice for anybody that's considering it is not to be afraid to do it. <laughs> I mean, it is brain surgery, but it wasn't nearly as traumatic as what, it, as what I thought the experience would be. And it, for the good and the benefit that it's given me, if I had to do it once every year to keep going like this, <laughs> I'd do it in a heartbeat. I would do it all over again, and I wish I'd done it sooner. It's just totally been a miracle for me, giving my life back. As you've seen in this half hour, the Providence Neuroscience Program offers not only cutting-edge treatment, but also exceptional and compassionate care. I'm Nadine Woodward, and thanks for watching.